I would like to talk about myself. Um, I'm, I'm a software engineer with over five years experience developing digital banking solutions for financial institutions in West Africa, that is Lagos, Nigeria, and um, Freetown, Sierra Leone. Um, personally, I founded two companies in Nigeria. One is a waste management company called Dustbin Boy, which basically leverages technology to deliver waste management services in Lagos, Nigeria. And the second is a music company that is a record label, well, because one of my hobbies um, is music. Yeah. Uh, so now let's start by talking about what model observability is. Model observability is the practice of validating and monitoring MM model performance and behavior. It involves measuring critical metrics, indicators, and processes to ensure model work as expected in the production environment. So simply put, model observability is the process of validating, evaluating, measuring, monitoring, and ensuring our model performs the way we expect it to perform in production environments. So before we move forward, let's talk about how model observability is different from model monitoring. While model observability provides real-time insights, model monitoring collects and analyzes metrics over time. Model monitoring detects anomalies and trends, while model observability diagnoses issues within processes. Model observability also reveals underlying system dependencies and understands why anomalies occur while model monitoring ensures model operates within thresholds and generally focuses on system health so why is model observability important why should we practice model observability easily on top of this list, list is transparency because oftentimes ai functions as a black box that lacks transparency in its processes so model observability is a way to gain transparent and to shed light into some of these processes. Model observability also helps in error detection because users may not notice when la large language models like GPT-4 make mistakes. Um, by also detecting these mistakes and providing transparencies and identifying some errors, the credibility of our model is increased. And by understanding and getting insights on why errors are occurring, we gain an understanding of our model and of course all of this by which is maintaining visibility and understanding our model and you know coupled with the credibility it helps users to sustain and it's the trust and it helps users to gain more trust in the ai system um so now let's talk about why model observability is important with a practical um, use case and a practical example using google chatbot bad Right after its launch, Bart claimed in a promotional campaign that the James Webb Space Telescope took the first ever image of an exoplanet. This was not true. And the consequences of this was, well, customers raised a lot of doubt on the model's efficiency and, well, Google reportedly lost $100 billion in market value because of this blunder. So now let's now that we understand the practical use case of why you know of what can happen with our model observability, let's let's talk about how model observability helps and the benefits that we get from model observability. Model observability enables engineers to perform root cause analysis, identify the reasons behind specific issues. That means it doesn't just generalize the errors and it doesn't just give us a basic overview of the errors. It helps engineers to go down to the root cause and helps them understand the specifics behind any specific issue. So the benefits of this obviously is continuous performance improvement, it ensures expected behavior in production and streamlined machine language workflow, of course scalability and it reduces time to resolution. So what are the um, components of um, key components of machine language observability? Uh, we have the event login, the tracing, model profiling, bias detection, and anomaly identification. So the event log login deals with the detailed logs of model activities. The tracing involves tracking data through stages. The model profiling involves performance analysis. While bias detection involves identifying and mitigating biases. And anomaly identification involves detecting unusual patterns. So here we have it in the diagram. Issues from the discovery to analysis to diagnosis and to resolution so what are the key challenges that face our model observability here in this presentation i will talk about data drift 
uh, performance degradation and data quality. So for data drift, um, this occurs when the statistical properties of the training data change over time. It can include coverage shift, which is changes in inputs, feature distributions, and model drift, which is changes in the relationship between inputs and target variables. Causes of these drifts include changes in customer behavior, shift in the external environment, demographic changes, and product updates and upgrades. Another key challenge, like we said, is the performance degradation, which is basically over time as machine learning applications gain more users, their model performance can decline due to model overfitting, presence of outliers, adversarial attacks, and changing data patterns. Um, and lastly, another key challenge is the quality of the data. Maintaining consistent data quality in production is challenging due to reliance on various input factors such as data collection method, pipelines, storage platforms, and pre-processing techniques. Some of the poss possible issues we can encounter here are the missing data, labeling errors, disparate data sources, privacy constraints, inconsistent formatting, and lack of representativeness. So now let's move to model observability challenges in large language models. Large language models, otherwise known as LLMs, face some unique issues. Well, we have hallucinations, which is, you know, they generate nonsensical or inaccurate responses. We also have no single ground truth, which is when multiple plausible answers are generated for the same questions, which make evaluation difficult. The response quality. Responses may actually be correct, but irrelevant or poorly toned. And we have instances of jailbreaks where, you know, some prompts can bypass security, leading to harmful, harmful outputs and, you know, the cost of retraining because this is and because ensuring up-to-date responses over time requires expensive retraining and these are just issues faced by you know London. so now that i've spoken about the challenges that model um, observability faces in large language models uh, let's talk about some of the evaluation techniques for large language models a tailored model observability strategy can help address challenges and improve evaluation some of the common techniques that we use include user feedback embedding visualization prompt re-engineering retrieval systems and fine-tuning with user feedback we collect and assess reports on bias and misinformation with embedding visualization we compare response and prompt embeddings for relevance with prompt engineering we test various prompts to enhance performance and detect issues with the retrieval systems we ensure our llms fetch correct information from relevant sources and with fine-tuning we adjust the model with domain specific data instead of full retraining so now let's go to challenges in computer vision here we have the image drift which is you know changes in image properties over time like lightning and background we have occlusion which is as seen as this in this diagram our objects blocking the primary objects leading to misclassification lack of annotated samples which is difficulty in finding labeled images for training and we have you know of course sensitive sensitive use cases where the cost of making errors and making mistakes is disastrous like in medical diagnosis and safe driving cars so some components which are some and some ways to address challenges in computer vision well on top of the list is the monitoring metrics which means we should measure image quality and model performance we should also use specialized workforce which which means we should involve domain experts in the labeling process and the quality of our edge devices we should also monitor remote devices like camera and sensors in real time the label quality also we should ensure high quality labeling with automation and regular reviews and lastly domain adaptation we should indicate when to fight some models based on data divergence so some monitoring techniques that we use in machine language observability we have the standard ml metrics like the recall precision advanced call mae we have the large language model metrics like the blue meteor sida for automated scoring we also use human feedback custom metrics and rlhf for human based assessment and we also have the computer vision metrics like the mean average precision intersection over union panoptic quality for tasks like object detection classification and segmentation so let's talk about explainability techniques in standard ml systems explainability is the capability of observability tools to provide clear understandable insights into system behavior and performance enabling stakeholders to easily interpret and act on the data 
there are two techniques one can use to interpret the model's decision making process here we have the sharp and the line the sharp which is the sharply addictive explanations computes the sharply value of each victor of each feature indicating feature importance for global and local explainability while the line the local interpretable model agnostic explanations perturbs and puts data to generate fake predictions it then trains the simpler model on the generated values to measure feature importance here explainability simply put is the capacity of our observability to to generate insights which can enable us which we can easily interpret and act on to enable us make decisions on the data and our model so now let's talk about explainability techniques in large language models here we have the attention based techniques where we visualize which word the model considers most important in any input sequence it is useful in models like chat bed and c5 that use transformer architecture we also have the saliency based techniques which computes gradients with respect to input features to measure their importance masking features and analyzing output relations can reveal crucial features so now let's talk about the explainability techniques in computer vision here we have the integrated gradient xari and gradcam i will show you the difference between the three on the next slide for the gradcam it generates a heat map for cnn models highlighting important regions by overlaying the heat map on the original image for the integrated gradient it builds a baseline image and adds features gradually computing gradients to identify important features for object prediction while for the xari it enhances the integrated gradient by highlighting pixel regions instead of single pixels segmenting similar image patches and computing saliency for each region so as you can see here the integrated gradient the xari and the grad cam so the integrated gradient basically it generates a baseline image and the xari which is an extension of it and as you can see the grad cam generates an it, its map which uh, for the for its own so uh, so let's give a quick summary of everything we've, uh, we've discussed over before we, we, we end it uh, we we've, we started by talking about model observability, which is the validation and you know measuring and ensuring the performance of our models. And we talked about how model observability is different from model monitoring. And then we talked about why observability is important. And we used Google's use case of i um, bad of Google's chatbot bad and the wrong information it gave and the effect on Google. Then we talked about the components of model observability. <coughs> which things like which involve things like event login bias detection and mobile model profiling and then we talked about the key challenges in model observability in machine language where we have the data drift performance the degradation and data quality we also talked about the key challenges in large language models like hallucinations um j bricks and we talked about the challenges in computer vision which is the occlusion image drift and then we talked about some measuring techniques and uh we, we finally talked about the explainability and um, model observability which is the degree to which our model can be explained and the degree to which insights can be gotten from the model so finally let's talk about future trends in model observability here we have the user friendly xai which is developing techniques to generate simple, understandable explanations. We also have the AI model fairness, which is using AXI to visualize learned features and detect bias. We also have the human centric explainability, which is combining insights from psychology and philosophy for better explainability methods. And we have the casual AI, which is highlighting why a model uses particular features for predictions adding value to explanations and increasing increasing robustness um so th so this brings us to the end of the presentation um thank you so much again for having me and um bye for now